One, two, three. Hallelujah. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Well, um, look at your name and say, get your Bible out. All right. Look back and say, um, we're going to learn tonight. All right. So I, I want to, uh, you know, I heard my, my wife mentioning uh, in the offering, she was talking about, you know, give and it should be given and all that. Well, that's that law of sowing and reaping. And we're going to put a lot of emphasis on that tonight because, I mean, oh, uh, there are just things that you need to learn and things that you need to learn how to be committed to for the rest of your Christian life. Amen. Not just because uh, sometimes we can have highs and lows. We can go in, we can go out, you know, we can believe God for a little bit. No, but there are things that you just got to have down pat to where it's a part of who you are for the rest of your days on this earth as a Christian. Amen. And so we just like teaching biblical principles to make sure that we're all we're all empowered to succeed. So let me pray before I get into this word. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus for blessing us, Lord, blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you, Lord, for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. All right. So you already got your Bibles out. And so um, I started this series for Wednesdays and entitled This is What I Believe. And it's really important during the times that we're in, you know, we're probably going to be shifting some things even on Sunday because we, you know, we had to speak out against some untruths that were going out there. But, you know, we are moving forward. Amen. Because uh, when you know the truth, then that's the only way you're going to be free. And so we want to just um, go ahead and prepare ourselves for what God has in store for us. But I'm going to preach, this is what I believe, part three. Now, the reason I'm, I'm preaching this is this is personal. Listen, there will be people that try to convince you to do all kinds of things. Amen. There will be people that try to persuade you to do one thing or another. But you've got to decide what it is you believe. Amen. And so you've got to decide, no, 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 that's not what I'm going to do. Or, yes, that's what I am going to do. And so when it comes to this book, there's so much um, twisting and so much manipulation going on. And people are able to get away with it because the body of Christ as a whole has not just simply decided what we believe. And so when you decide that this is true for yourself, it doesn't matter what somebody says. Come on, somebody doesn't matter what somebody talks about. It doesn't matter if you lose friends. You don't care because this is what you believe. You've established it and that's how you're going to live your life. Amen. And so it's my job to preach the gospel. And then in a way where we understand it so we can say, yeah, you know what? I believe that because there are uh, it's not only the, the negative things, the enemy will try to uh, trick you when it comes time to believe big. They say, oh, no, that, that, you, that can't happen. That's unrealistic. Well, how many unrealistic things happen in the Bible? I mean, the Bible's full of unrealistic things. And so we are a people that are designed to believe in miracles. But we've just got to decide what we believe. So let's start out by going to Psalm 512. Psalm 512. And I, I just want to... Uh, bring some clarity to some things because there's there's a lot of stuff about grace. There's a lot of stuff about works. So, oh, you know, the works aren't important and there's so much junk. But we are going to be a people of the book and we're going to get results because we're obeying the book. So it says in Psalm 512, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, will thou compass him as with a shield? So let me break this down. For thou, Lord, will bless Anybody. Is that what it says? No. Huh? What about all this grace and all this? We don't have to do nothing. We don't have to. Is that what that says? For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. Will thou compass them as with a shield? So imagine this, that you are surrounded. Do you understand what it means to be surrounded? So let's say you have on protective gear. That gear is to protect you 
from all sides, right? Uh, you have something protecting you in the back, something on the side. Think about the advancements that they've made in the automotive industry. Remember back in the day when they didn't have uh, airbags? Yeah. Uh, some of y'all are not old enough. You, didn't, <laughs> you, you don't remember that. Some of y'all, you, you remember where not only did they not have airbags, but they didn't care about no seat belts. And so if you could fit Tim in a station wagon, roll on. <laughs> Go ahead and get to where you need to get to. Well, how many of things have changed? Now they have airbags that will come out even on the side. You guys know that? On the side, they got all this stuff. It's to protect you all around. Well, they're trying to surround you so that you have a better chance of making it in the event of an accident. Well, when you start to understand that God's favor surrounds me, see, there's a lot of wrong mindsets in the church. And I think that people have wrong mindsets because they don't know. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Well, if you believe this, he says, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, will thou compass them as with a shield. And so if I'm surrounded with a shield, this shield of favor is circling my entire body. So that means if I walk into the job site, how many know I got favor? And I'm not. Oh. Come on. If I walk into the store, how many know I, I got favor? I can't shake it because I'm surrounded by it. How are you going to shake it if you're surrounded by it? But the question is, do you believe this? Because if we believe this, we wouldn't be complaining about anything. See, this might not look good right now, but I just remembered how much favor I got. So God's already working on somebody. So this thing's probably going to be changed by tomorrow. Oh, y'all up in here, man. But so... It's evidence that the church doesn't believe this because they get rattled, they get shaken, they allow these things to pull on their emotions and then they get upset with people. He didn't say you're going to have favor, um, that you're going to depend on people. It's God. It's what God is doing. How many know if you do right by God, he can handle people? Amen. Boy, if God be for you. Y'all in here. I'm just saying if we believe it, though, you know what I mean? Because sometimes we say, oh, yeah, I know that scripture. But do you believe it? Right. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I mean, if you believe it, though, it's like, uh, what is that other one? Romans 8, 32 or something. If God be for you, who could be against you? 31. Well, do you believe it? Then you say, well, nobody can be against me. Well, they don't want to give me this promotion because they don't like your weight. But if God be for you, oh, come on. <laughs> Who could be against you? You say you surround with favor as with a shield. If you surround with favor as with a shield, why are you complaining about what somebody else is doing? Right. This person at the job don't like me. Oh, but I'm surrounded with favor as with a shield. See, it's, it's a different way of living. But if you don't really believe that, then now you won't take the scripture because I'm going to break it down. Because we talk a lot of word, but then how much word are we applying? Well, you apply what you believe. Amen. Come on. Amen. You apply what you believe. Amen. If you don't apply it, you don't believe it. Right. You just said you believe it. Oh, because y'all in here, man. I'm going to show you some of the principles that are just laid out. And if we really believe them, this is going to influence our behavior. It's going to shape the way we live, the way we think. And so he says, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, will thou compass him as with the shield. So this shows a connection between man's behavior. Oh, come on. They don't like talking about behavior in church. This, anything goes. And if, if we put too much of a demand on you, I mean, no, people understand work ethic in every area but the church. They understand work ethic in their job. They understand work ethic in taking care of their body. Come on, somebody. How many know? Uh, well, you know what? Just like you were teaching yesterday, you eat this and this is going. What is that? That's work. People understand. Oh, but when it comes to the church, oh, don't judge me. I don't. Uh -uh. That's, that's that work salvation. Wait, but everything's works. Let me ask you to challenge your job on that. I, I dare any of you to go to your boss and say, hey, don't don't judge me on my work here. I, I, 
I'm under grace. I'm not. I, no, no, you have to perform. And guess what? You will be evaluated. And based upon your performance, there are benefits. Come on. And then there's a chance of a loss of benefits. Well, where do you think the world got this stuff from? The Bible. But the devil has snuck his way into the church and tricked people so that now they can no longer make the connection between behavior and rewards. Amen. But this never went away. So this scripture, this one scripture shows a connection between man's behavior and God's blessings. So here's what the world wants you to think. God is going to bless everybody. We're all God's kids. That's not what the Bible teaches. You've got to get saved and then now you belong. Listen, he created us all, but that doesn't mean we all belong to him. Amen. How many know just because you got kids on your street? If they all showed up at your house at dinner time, how many know you might say, hmm, where's your mama? I'm just saying you don't live here. Well, you're not responsible for all of these kids. Amen. And this is the way God is. God gives us a chance to step into this family. But whether or not we receive it, that's up to us. I'll give you another one. Isaiah 1, 19, and then we'll look at 20 on this. Simple scriptures, King James. You can't change the word, so you have to allow the word to change you. So people are going to say, man, you can have this, you can have that. But if they don't teach you obedience, then maybe you're going to get it from somewhere else. You're not getting it from God. Amen. Amen. And so he says, if you be willing. See, now I talk to you guys as we open up this sermon. I talk to you about something that is important, which is opportunity and not obligation. And so if you be willing, what does that mean? You have a free will to exercise. Now, if how many of y'all remember when you didn't have a free will? Yeah. Come on. I mean, if, all you got to do is think back when you were a kid. Yeah. You didn't have a free will. I know we didn't. We didn't have all that. <laughs> now, some some, you know, sometimes some of this parenting going on today, you know, the parent don't have a free will. You know, the, the kid is running everything. But in my generation. Mm -mm, what they said. Come on. How many of y'all? I might not have enough people from the old school. How many of y'all got in trouble for asking stuff like why? <laughs> like what? That, wh if you ask why, that was almost like you start cussing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, man. And see, it wasn't about your feelings. It was just about what they said. And you just had to accept it. Well, see, here we are today. The word is, is it ain't changing. Now, whether or not we decide we're going to believe it, what do you think God's going to say? Oh, well, this don't apply to you because you don't believe that scripture. It has nothing to do with what you believe. Do you know that this truth was established before you were born? Before you ever stepped on the planet Earth, this was already established and it was already working. And so we've got to understand this. If you be willing. And so now we are adults. We have a free will. Nobody is making us come to church. Y'all get that? Mm -hmm. Nobody is forcing us. Hey, you know what? If you skip church, there are no church police that are going to write you a ticket. Right. Nobody's going to call you and say you're in trouble. But how many of you skip work? Right. Oh. Yeah. oh, but pastor, that's my livelihood. Well, that's because you're operating in ignorance. Because if you understood the blessing, you understand that the blessing is your livelihood. Your job is not your livelihood. The blessing is your livelihood. We are to live by the blessing. God never told us to live based on how much somebody says we can make. God told us that we are blessed with faithful Abraham. They that be Christ, they that belong to Christ are blessed with faithful Abraham. Galatians uh, 3, 9 and also Galatians 3, 29. We are the seed of Abraham. And so we live by blessing, not employment. That's not popular. 
But pastor, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm dependent on this job. Well, you're going to continue to depend on it. So I hope they pay you good because that's about all you're going to get. When you learn to depend on God, then guess what? Oh, y'all, y'all see, I'm a, the one you depend on the most is the one you obey first. One you depend on the most is the one you obey first. You depend on that job the most, you will obey that job first. You depend on God, you will obey him first. And you'll say, I don't care what they say, I'm listening to you. What do you want me to do? And I will do it to the T. Amen. And what does he say? I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Amen. So you don't have to prepare for famine. Because he says, in the days of famine, Amen. come on, they will be satisfied. Amen. Come on, somebody, and read that whole Psalm 37. But in the days of famine, they will be satisfied. But if you're not obeying God, you better go stack some dry goods. Come on, you better go get yourself a generator. Come on, somebody. You better go get yourself another mask and several more COVID shots if you're not obeying God. Because you're going to have to preserve yourself. And that's what's going on in this world. We've got a whole bunch of people who have learned to depend on a world system that is failing. It is going down. They keep coming out and telling you different stuff. Right. At one point, are we going to say, I'm not believing that? Right. You see what I'm saying? One point they said, get a COVID test is going to help you. I mean, a, a shot, a COVID shot is going to help you. That's what they said. Then they said, well, uh, it don't help everybody. Wait, but, but, but how are you going to change that? You can't just flip that on us. I mean, what happened? This is the only truth we got. And so if you would have locked in to Psalm 91, he said, no evil shall befall you and no plague shall come nigh your dwelling. It does not say if you get a shot. No, I ain't mad at you. If you got a shot, that's whatever. You do what you got to do. But at some point, we got to say, this is what I believe. You see what I'm saying? This is where we are. Because it keeps changing stuff. Now, God says it is not right for man to lay with man. Now, I told you guys. I told you. I said, okay, first they starting to play games with the tithes. Because they want the church's money. They want to mess up your finances. And anybody who listens to me, listen. I'm not saying this because somebody told me I have tried it and proven it. That tithe has kept me healthy. That tithe has kept me prospering. I don't lose nothing in my house. We don't lose nothing at my house. We have plenty and more keeps coming in because the tithe is based on covenant. Well, it's awful convenient for somebody to tell you you don't have to do it. When they got millions already. But watch when. See there's other scriptures that those people have taught. That are going to come back on them. It's something called the wealth transfer. Come on somebody. It's something called the wealth of the wicked. It's laid up for the just. Oh but we're not paying attention to behavior. Well if you're not paying attention to behavior. You're not paying attention to blessings. Because none of the blessings say they're going to come to you no matter what. Right. Everything is conditional. Right. Amen? Amen. Everything is conditional. Proverbs 13, 22. Um, the wealth of the sinner. Amen? Is later for, let's just put up a bonus scripture just for somebody. Uh, Proverbs 13, 22. And let's look at this in the Amplify Classic. I just want you to see this. Just that way, you know, you know what God says. A good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness. What's that sound like? Behavior? No. That sounds like behavior to me. Moral stability and goodness. How, does, how do my kids learn how to act right? Now, how is it that God, how many of y'all, man, you get some uh, whoopings for doing wrong? Did you, was there any connection? We used to have stuff called like a referral. Like they write up this little sheet on you at school. Like for me, uh, getting a call to the house was not a good thing. See what I mean? That, 
like I could just associate that with pain. You know what I mean? Just a quick association. That's just pain. You know what I mean? You ever see those kids that's in the principal's office and one of them's crying. They just tear. Ah. Yeah, that one's going to get beat when they get home. That's what that's all about. Amen? Well, there's always an association. Do right. Get blessed. Do wrong. Get punished. Is what it is. So a good man, I mean, no, who decides if you're good? If you just get to do what you want. Because you can say, I'm a good man. I know I got three wives, but I'm just a good man. Well, I bet you you got some other people that might say, you're not good. We don't believe in that kind of goodness. You see what I'm saying? You have to act right to be in that category of being a good man. I can't say I'm a good man and I treat my wife bad. I'm a good man. I can't say I'm a good man and I steal money from the church. Come on. I, uh. And so what you have people doing is they say scriptures like this, they, they kind of skip on down to the blessing part, but they don't tell you what your requirement is. See, that's like watching an infomercial on TV. They will always talk to you about the results and they will always give you a testimonial of some little new workout equipment. And if you do this, you're going to get arms like these. No, you're not, because they're not using that. They're getting remember that shaky weight. Remember that thing? That shaky weight was not getting nobody on swole. I'm telling you right now what they were doing is they were doing some real weights. And then when it was time to shoot the commercial, come on, they did some real weights, got some water sprayed on them, and then let me get that shaky weight. This right here is going to get your arms like these. Lying. You're not going to get that. Amen? That's no different than these people preaching all this prosperity and all this stuff, but never tell you what you got to do. Oh, you know, I just... Listen, you don't have to believe in it. But at least you got to know, at least you'll know somebody told you the truth. And so he says, a good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness. I got to teach my children how to live right. They got to have a legacy, footsteps to follow in. Amen. I've got to leave that for them. A good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness for his children's children. Well, how can I leave it for the children's children? Because... I'll teach it to my kids. They're going to teach it to their kids. This is generational. Don't you understand? That's how the blessing worked. Abraham taught Isaac. Isaac taught Jacob. You know what I mean? And it just went all the way down. It just kept going. And it was practiced because it was passed down. And it says to his children's children, look at this. And the wealth of what? The sinner. Now, wait. If behavior doesn't matter, who is the sinner? Well, what is sin? You see what I'm saying? What is sin? I mean, to you, you might feel like it's okay, you know, to take other people's stuff. You might feel like you're justified. But they might not agree. (laughs) They may say, you broke into my house. I happen to have a gun. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? But you can say, but I have a right because this is America, the land of the free. No, this is not America. This is my house. (laughs) So when you stepped in my house, you left out of America's jurisdiction and you stepped into mine. (laughs) (laughs) You see what I'm saying? And so... This is what he's saying is the wealth of the sinner. So that's people who are not doing right by God. That's what sin is. It is anything that is against the will of God. So now that makes a person a sinner. And yes, we've been forgiven and we'll talk about that. But we just don't get this freedom to just do what we want. And so the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually 
into the hands of the righteous. What's that word righteous? Wait, but it has something to do with your behavior. Y'all in here with me. See, it's not you're just righteous because you chose to say that. You have to have behavior that allows you to stand under that banner. If you look up a word in the dictionary, there are normally words that help you understand the meaning. Well, the way that we are able to uh, exhibit this in the world or demonstrate it, it's behavior. Right now, what does this mean? Oh, I'm trying to be perfect. No, Jesus does it in us, but he never comes in you. And leads you to live like the devil. The Holy Ghost will never come inside of a person and cause that person to live like the devil. You know what the Holy Ghost will do? He will empower you to obey the word. He will empower you to do what is pleasing in the sight of the Lord so that you fall under this category. So the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up. And so it was already laid up. So don't be upset with people. Just understand, oh, they're working for me anyway. Yeah. Oh, come on. If, but if you don't prioritize your behavior, then now you find yourself not qualifying for some things that God wants you to get. Amen. Let me let me give you another one. This is just off script. Um, let's go to Ecclesiastes 2.26. Ecclesiastes 2.26. And then we can just look at that in the Amplified uh, Classic. I mean, excuse me, uh, actually, I said Amplified, but you can just put in the King James. Sorry about that. Amen. So he says here, for God gives to a man that is what? Huh? Good in whose sight? So just because you said it's good. Don't mean God said it's good. You got to find out what God says. Oh, but we live in a world, man. I'm finding out all this crazy stuff. Some of this stuff is baffling me. I'm kind of like, wait, my wife was telling me about this. Uh, somebody went to a concert here recently, a Christian concert. But everybody up in the concert. Listen, I don't know if this sounds strange to you, but it just sounds like weird to me. So at the Christian concert, they were selling alcohol. And so people were praising Jesus with beer. In the, are y'all in here? Amen. Y'all think I'm making this up? Uh, this is me. I said, I can't make this up. This is really happening. Wait, but you up in there singing to Jesus. And but this is cool. Like a oh, glory to God. I don't get it. I don't get it. Who said that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But people are redefining what's good. Oh, it's okay. Oh, you, you know, you can do that. So when people tell you you can do something that God says you can't, you need to take offense to that. You need to say, wait a minute. So what you're really trying to do is you're trying to steal my blessing. Is that what you're doing? What if some people would have stood up and gave a rebuke to somebody who said you don't have to tithe no more? What if they would have stood up and said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You will not steal my blessing. As a matter of fact, since you said it don't need to be done, I need you to give me the money back. Give me all the tithes I put in. I got my tithing record, so let me give it to you and let me know when the check's coming back to me. Ain't not one pastor that said that giving nobody them tithe checks back. Right. Amen. Guaranteed. If they if you're going to right or wrong. So there's something called retribution. Yeah. Right. OK, so you cannot go damage your neighbor's property and then later say, oh, man, you know, my bad. I kind of lost my mind right there and I just wasn't doing right. And so will you forgive me? Yes, but you're going to have to fix my stuff. That's true repentance. True repentance is when you're willing to offer retribution. And so if, uh, and you know who it is, Creflo. If Creflo Dollar says, 
we don't have to tithe no more than Creflo Dollar. And matter of fact, he repented for teaching on it. Well, if he really repented, he should have offered retribution. Because if it's not retribution offered, it's not true repentance. My bad. I should have never wrote those books that you bought and those books made me rich, but my bad, throw them all away. But can I get a refund? Is that anything that can happen or, cause I still have my receipt. <laughs> Won't get it, huh? Okay. So my point in this is don't deviate from the book. But listen, if you don't believe it, that's okay. At least you know where you are. You just see what I'm saying? Just don't play with it. Don't say I believe it and then you don't. Either you believe it because when you believe stuff, you understand biblical principles. And then you will practice biblical principles for the rest of your life. Amen. You understand that? And so there'll be biblical principles that you receive as truth and you'll practice them for the rest of your life. It doesn't matter what happens. Like me and my wife, it doesn't matter if we had no money left. If somebody gave us a dollar, you know what we're doing first? Tithing. Tithing. Because it's a biblical principle that we believe. Amen. If I believe it, I won't stray from it. You see what I'm saying? And so that goes, that'll keep you uh, in line as well. You know, if, if you think that God's not going to be pleased with you, uh, getting upset with people, losing your temper. You know, people that lose their temper multiple times. And they do it over and over again. So you cuss them out today. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. They did it again tomorrow. Well, you don't believe that there's any punishment attached to your behavior. So you think that the grace is just that thick that you can get away with it. But if you, for a second, come on somebody, because God has done that to people. God has done that to people who were abusing their spouse and God showed up on them. Said, do it again and you're dead. Well, that'll change some behavior real quick. You know, when we were kids, they used to be like, you gonna, you need some get right. When you get a threat, you go, hey, okay, woo. Right? But it's like, do you believe it? We got to be people that do. So this is why I preach against sin and all this stuff, because I don't want you in this category. Now, this Bible is true. It was written before you were here. People have been applying these principles and thriving before you are ever thought of. So you can't come along and change it. So you're either going to fall in a category of good or bad. And that's going to be based on your behavior. Yes, you give your life to Jesus, but he lives in you. That's why Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me daily. So that means I've got to continuously, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, present yourself to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. See, don't be conformed to this world. This world is saying you can go to Christian concerts and get drunk. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So now the latest thing is they're, they're starting to, and I told you guys it was going to happen, but my wife told me it's already started. But now they're starting to say the gay and lesbian thing is okay in the church. We, we want to, you know. Says who? All right. So we cannot fall in this category of being on the wrong side with God. We want to be on the good side. And so he says, for God gives to a man that is good. Look at your name and say, that's me. OK, so this is not about work. So don't let some old religious preacher tell you, don't, that's just works. And now you're trying to do it on your own. No, no, God's going to do it through me. And I'm not going to disqualify myself by saying I'm a filthy sinner because I don't qualify for this. If you stay in that filthy sin state, you don't get none of this. So I mean, no, this is good stuff you ought to benefit from because God has made it available to you. For God gives to a man that is good in his sight wisdom. I mean, I want God's wisdom. See, if I'm, 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 I'm good in God's sight, God sees me and says, I'm pleased in what I see. What's he going to, he's going to give me wisdom. So I never have to be in a state of confusion. I never have to be in a state of bewilderment 
Or a lot of times stress comes, anxiety comes because of the unknown. Fear comes because of the unknown. I don't know what to do. But he says here, for God gives to a man, that includes woman, uh, that is good in his sight, wisdom. Would y'all say that that's a promise? So would you be able to say, I'm, I'm a, God going to tell me. I'm going to be all right. I'm going to know what to do because God's going to tell me. And knowledge, he gives wisdom. Uh, he gives to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom, knowledge, and what else? She's got a lot of people in the church depressed. I can't shake this depression. But what does this say? Huh? I'm just, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. But you know, see, uh, we need to have less counseling and more Bible teaching. Because people are trying to counsel you around something you cannot avoid. You're going to have to deal with God. Doesn't matter how sweet we make you feel along the way. You're going to have to deal with God. And he's going to let you know the error of your ways. And so he will give us joy. But to the sinner. Now, before you flip the verse, you see these words. Good and you see sinner in this scripture. Just King James. And what does it say? Something for the good, they get this. Something for the sinner, they get this. So what is this letting you know about? It's letting you know about behavior and rewards, right? Results. It's really the law of sowing and reaping, which we'll get into in a second. But it just spells it out. It's no different than the things we've heard all along. It's no different than even the laws of our land. Amen? If you kill somebody, what are you going to do? Well, I just felt like doing it. No, you're going to jail. Why are you in jail? Because of what you did. That was your behavior. And so now what you got is something called punishment. <coughs> So we just got to understand it's that simple when it comes to the word. So he says, for the, but to the sinner, he gives travail. You know what that word travail means? That's like a woman in labor. Now, if, you've, if you're a mama and you had that baby, you know that is nothing nice. Well, <laughs> you serious? Hey, I'm not even playing with that. You know what I mean? And so... He gives to the sinner travail. But look at this. Travail to, okay, man, y'all getting all this on Wednesday. It's under the orders of the Holy Ghost. So here's what they get to do. So, like, that's what they call it when a, a child is, is being born. The woman is in labor. So it's a work, but it's such a taxing work. You know what I mean? It's such a painful work. Well, that kind of pain and that kind of Really, a woman is, is like toiling in that because, you know, you know, Eve messed up. And so that's what God says is going to happen. But it, it, it feels, you know, they're, they're happy when the baby's born. But there's a moment they're going through it, man. More than a moment. Them some hours of labor. You know what I mean? Well, this is the, the, the description of the word travail. He says this is the same thing God is giving to the sinner. Travail. So when you think of travail, think of that mama having that baby. So that's what the sinner gets. But what's their labor? The mama's labor is birthing a beautiful baby. But the sinner's labor is right here. This is the result of that labor. To gather and to heap up. Y'all in here with me. That he may give to him that is. Y'all. Are, are we seeing this? So they're going to have to painfully toil just so they ha you ever met those people that are what's called a workaholic. Yes. That's because they've been mandated to work for me. And so they are gathering and heaping. They will work 60, 70, 80 hours. They will sleep less and work more all because they don't want to bow before God. 
And so now this is their portion. This is what they get for that behavior. And so they have to gather and heap it up. Why? That he may give to him that is good before God. All about behavior. So if I'm good before God, then the one who's not good before God He's got to get his grind on, get his hustle on, just so he can have enough to come give to me. If you believe that, you would really want to be one that is good before God. If you really believe that, there is no way you would want to experience this kind of travail and labor just to give it away to someone else. See that? And so this is also vanity and vexation of the spirit. So there's some tormenting going on. There are people that are just struggling. But it's all because of a failure to obey. And so now go back to Isaiah, Isaiah 1:19. I'm giving you just a little extra scriptures here, but I got to break this down because to me, the law of sowing and reaping will prevail, and so I know we must continue to teach the truth. And that way people can reap good benefits. So if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. How many know there's plenty of good out there? Do you understand that they don't need to print any more dollars for you to be taken care of? Even if they said, we are out of money. You know what you can say? But heaven ain't. So (laughs) And so I'm glad I'm dependent on heaven. Now, what keeps you connected To heaven's resources, it's your tithe. And so I'm not, you know, just it's just a principle. You can't get away from Malachi 310. That's the only time God says, prove me. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith. If I want to open up the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. So that is something that makes you recession proof. Amen. So gas prices won't affect you. Oh, y'all. You understand? You don't have to go to the gas pump. Experiencing pain. You don't have to pump your gas. Talking about, ooh. I. It's still going. Just let it go. Because God is going to supply anyway. God is never going to leave you. Because he cannot lie. He don't even know how to lie. But it's where are we? Are we in that category of the righteous? Or are we in that category of the sinner? Now that's not God's choice. That's your choice. Amen. And so if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Now let me just give you this verse 20. Huh? So like I'm forced to do, you're not forced to do anything. You understand? God never took the free will away. You understand? He gave free will to Adam. And so now you have free will as a part of your DNA. And so what does that mean? You have the power to choose. And so, but if you refuse and rebel, so I just showed you, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you what? Might be, let me just, might be just depending on what church you go to, because if you don't go to this church, you might be all right. No, you shall be devoured with the sword. For who said this? That's why I don't like Pastor Troy. He's preaching fire and brimstone. Let me see. Does this say anything about Pastor Troy in this scripture? My name is not here. It says the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now the question is, do you believe it? See? It's simple truth. But it's a matter of whether or not we believe it. So obedience brings blessings. Disobedience brings punishment. Many in the body of Christ, unfortunately, no longer believe this. They no longer believe it. How do I know they don't believe it? Because they don't change their behavior. That is the only way you can still do the same things and say you love Jesus, but not have any change at all in your life. You don't believe this book. And so you don't connect 
bad behavior with bad results. But someone who does believe this, now let me, it's not that you're going to walk around and be a saint. One thing I believe is that I cannot do it. But I also believe that greater is he that is on the inside of me than he that is in the world. I also believe that if I abide in him, that he is the vine, I am the branch. And if I abide in him, I will bear much fruit. For without him, I can do nothing. I do believe that. I do believe that if I stay with Jesus, then my life will reflect more of him than it will of me. I do believe that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new and all things are of God. I do believe that. So what I believe is that he's going to do it through me. I've said things in years past. I've told people, stop trying. Well, Pastor, that's not very encouraging. I'm trying to get you to the place where you get so tired of trying to do it your way that you just quit. Because when you come to the end of yourself. You know, Jesus says, unless a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die. It abides alone. But if it dies, it'll bear much fruit. Amen. See, Colossians 3, 3 says you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. So that takes all the pressure off of me trying to do right. Now, if the Holy Ghost is guiding me, I'm probably going to go to the right place. Amen. I'm just saying but if he's not, see, a lot of times people say, well, the Lord, I feel like the Lord told me that you. You're doing what your soul told you to do. Your soul told you because your soul got impatient. So your soul wants stuff now. But God does not act like that. God has a timing that is his timing and that his timing is perfect. He knows stuff that you have yet to consider. And so you say, I need this right now. And God says, well, right now is not your time for this. But then if you persist, then God will say, go ahead with your bad self. And then what will you do then? Complain about why your stuff is so jacked up. And then you will go to the same God that you didn't want to wait on and ask him to fix your mess. This marriage is terrible. And God says, I didn't tell you to get married to him or to her. Lord, I need a miracle. I need a miracle of transformation. And what, what is this? What you want me to transform? him <laughs> transform him I need it I need my mind need to call on resurrection power you know and then God says not able to do it <laughs> and you say wait but I because I need them to lock in what I'm doing because now I've, I've got a revelation and I'm going on with the word, but they're not. And I'm, you know, you need to change them. Mm -mm. Now you get a chance to endure. Learn the power of endurance. So then maybe next time when I tell you don't do it, you might listen to me. Amen. Because God will always tell you. See, people, because of their mind, their will and their emotions, they want a new house. Why? Because their cousin got one. But God says, it ain't your turn yet. Oh, no, no. But, the, you know, but they, they said I qualify, though, because I'm, you know, I might need, they said I can get this. It's not your time. And so now you're discontent inside of here. Why? Because. You get invited over your cousin's house. They're having a barbecue. And you're up in there looking at, hey, wow. 
You got all this? What? And then you start doing some old religious stuff, and they ain't even saved <laughs> up in here. Man, they got all this, and they not even saved. I know I'm supposed to. I claim my prosperity. The <laughs> devil is a liar. It's my turn to shine. I'm about to get my stuff. God says, be still and know that I am God. Because you will run out there and get yourself into a situation you don't want to be in. You see what I'm saying? But the question is, do we believe this? See? Do we believe this? And if we just believe it, we're going to get greater benefits. And so many, once again, many in the body of Christ no longer believe that there's any connection with what they do and what God does. So they don't believe that their behavior has any impact on what God will do or will not do for them. And so you have people saying, you can't buy God. God's going to do what he wants to do. Well, he already wrote it in the book. I wouldn't know it was a promise if it wasn't in here. And so he's given me the power to claim it. And I can align my life in a way that I'm going to get more of this. Now, what's the danger in this? People no longer associating uh, their behavior and no longer connecting the dots and also not seeing God blessing people that are obedient. The danger in this is it causes people to live. It causes people to live haphazardly and unintentional. So if you're unintentional, you're just you just living. You're like, whatever happens will happen. You know, man, just try that one time, one day at your job. Just try. People won't do that. Let's say I'm just, you know, uh, they tell you what time you're going to be there. They said, what time? Oh, seven. Eh, I probably roll. Well, I probably roll in at nine thirty. <laughs> oh, OK. Thank you, sir, for telling us. We appreciate your honesty. Uh, also, on your way out, we have your last check prepared already because we don't get down like that. Amen. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? But if people don't see anything in the church, it's like I tell you guys, you got to sow the word. You got to listen. You got if I'm preaching up in here, man, you got to get it. But if people don't see a connection, if they don't believe it, if they don't see it, that I get more word, it's going to help me in every area of my life. But see, we get blinded and we can't tie that together. And so we don't know how to put it together. We don't know how to put it together and then say, oh, Man, I'm doing better because of my commitment to God. See, I made a commitment to God, so, man, everything. See, we were able to make that connection so nobody could steal it. We said, oh, no, no. We're not just living this kind of life because we're lucky. We're blessed. Well, in order for you to be in that blessing, you got to be found faithful. And this is what God is looking to do. And so we don't want to live haphazardly and unintentional. This whatever will be, will be. And that's why people have no standards anymore. No standards in the church. No, they just, you know, it doesn't matter. And so because they don't connect it with what God is doing. Now, there's going to be some rude awakenings, believe me, because God is not mocked. If you don't hear anything else, you better hear what I'm saying. God will not be mocked. People will have to answer and they will have to walk in the fruit of their decisions. Amen. And so go to Galatians. Galatians. Chapter six. God has actually given us power to impact our own lives. You got power right now to impact your own life. Galatians six, seven and nine. He says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. But whatever a man, what? Hmm? Whatever a man sows, that what? Will he also reap? Next verse. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap what? But he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And so now if I'm understanding this, this is the this is the law of seed time and harvest. Yeah. And so let's look at this in in the NLT, this verse seven. Verse seven in the NLT. Don't be misled. 
You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always, look at your name and say always. always. You will always harvest what you plant. Got it? You will always harvest what you plant. And so this exposes us to that superior, never-ending biblical principle, the law of sowing and reaping. Genesis 8.22. Let's look at that real quick. Genesis 8.22. King James. He says, um, we want to get that in the... So this, he says, while the earth remains, so in order for you to be here, the earth's got to be here. You know what I mean? You can't be like, I'm done with this earth. We're done with the earth. We're done with you. So you got to be on. So while this earth is here, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and, and winter and day and night. How many know no matter where you go, you experience those things? Amen. And so and summer and winter and night and day shall not cease. See that? So it's going to last forever. Why? It's the law. Seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest is never going away. And so the free spirited world calls it works. Oh, you're just works. You're just preaching that works. So even though James says faith without works is dead. But people start talking about we're not saved by works. I know that. That's how you got saved. Because, I mean, no, if it was up to your works, you wouldn't have got saved. Because your works would never have been good enough. And so now we're talking about the results of salvation. So I cannot get saved by my works. I cannot say, God, I'm going to do this and do this, and then can I get saved? No. I get saved, and then the result of my salvation is fruit. And so now that is what's going to, that's where he says faith without works is dead. See what I mean? So if I said I got faith, then now my faith will produce works. Amen? All right. And so we don't want to fall for these things uh, because God never ended the law of sowing and reaping. But he just gave us a chance to sow better seed. Look, your name say better seed. Okay, you can sow better seed through Jesus. And so um, I'm going to close this in a minute. But Hebrews 10, 16 and 17, he basically says, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. These are the days we're in now, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and inequities will I what? Remember them no more. So he's not going to remember the wrong that you've done. See, this is him giving us a chance. He knows that the law of sowing and reaping is still active. But he's got to give you a chance to sow new seed. And so your old harvest is canceled by the blood. How many of you are happy about that? Come on. How many of you are happy that some of the stuff, because you sold for a lot more than what showed up. Oh, I can't get amen. Before we close, some of y'all know you sold for some stuff that didn't show up on you, the blood canceled it. And I'm so glad that I didn't get a harvest off of all that seed I sold. And so the blood canceled that bad harvest. But we still have the responsibility of sowing seed. And so you cannot get a new harvest without sowing new seed. So just because your old bad harvest got canceled, but the law of sowing and reaping is still active. So now you got to use the power Jesus gave you to sow new seed. Amen. So guess what? You're going to get a better harvest. And so many people are forgiven. You want to know why we have so many problems in the church? I be believing stuff like, man, shoot, everybody ought to be healed. Oh, I can't get no amen up in here. Everybody ought to be rich. Come on. Everybody ought to have peace. I just believe stuff like that because it says it in the word. But the reason that uh, we have so many problems in the church is many people are forgiven, but they never change their seed. Come on. Many people are forgiven, but they never change their seed. So they keep getting old harvest. 
you, ca you keep having money problems. Because you had money problems when you weren't saved. Why? You sold for money problems. Now you're saved and forgiven, but you're still sowing for money problems. And so guess what? Money problems keep coming, keep showing up. Oh, come on. How many people know you got saved, you got forgiven, but some people still sick? Well, because when they wasn't saved, they were sowing for sickness. But now they got saved. Oh, y'all don't want me to get into this. You don't, you know. And they still saw him for sickness. Huh? Well, if you want new harvest, come on, you got to have new seed. You see what I'm saying? How many know you can eat a bunch of donuts as a sinner <laughs> and, eat a, and still eat a bunch of donuts as a saint? But the law of sowing and reaping is still going to work whether you're a sinner or a saint. You ate them donuts. That's why your blood sugar is off the charts. Oh, but I'm saved now, Pastor. But you, you have to sow some new seed. Oh, come on, man. You have to sow some new seed because the law of sowing and reaping didn't go away. So what do we have? A lot of Christians. Glory to God, I'm going to heaven, but I'm still broke. Check the seed. Glory to God, I'm going to heaven, but my body's falling apart. Check the seed. Come on. So what does this mean? God is an unjust God? No, it's the law of sowing and reaping. You see what I'm saying? And before we close, I know I keep saying that, but the biggest seed bag you have is your mouth. That's the biggest seed bag you got. And so even though you said the sinner's prayer, if you speak death, hmm? you know how many Christians died of COVID? Believers in the Lord Jesus. But a lot of them spoke it. I'm not saying they all did, but I just know what I spoke. Y'all in here with me. What I spoke was not based on the variant. What I spoke was based on the book. I didn't speak. I didn't care about no variant or whatever they said it's going to do. Oh, no, not here. Why? Because I've been given the power. Oh, come on, somebody. Proverbs 18, 20, 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit Thereof, your words are seed that you sow that brings a harvest. If you don't like that harvest, you better check what you've been sowing. Because I don't care if you're saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. You keep speaking death. Death is coming. You keep speaking sickness. Sickness is coming. You keep speaking broke. Your money's about to leave. Come on, somebody. You keep speaking it. And guess what? It's the law of sowing and reaping. You keep speaking, I can't. You never will. Why? It's a law. I mean, you might make it to heaven, but you will experience more of the curse than the blessing because of what's coming out of your mouth. Mark 4:14, 4, a sower sows the word. So remember this as I close. Your biggest seed bag is your mouth. So if I speak, oh man, I'm, I want to close, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shake up the body of Christ, man. Stop claiming all this stuff. Stop identifying with all this. Stop talking about all this stuff that's, that you don't want. And a lot of people saying stuff they don't believe. Somebody's a, whoo, man, you like to gave me a heart attack. You don't want no heart attack. You know what I'm saying? My back is killing me. You don't want to die of no backache. That ain't what you want. But the devil tricked you to not even believe what you say. That don't change the law. So what the law says is to keep talking it. Oh, <laughs> it's on the way. It's coming. And, you know, these people want to talk about the universe. Well, there is a universe, but he is the God of the universe. 
And so in this universe that God is above, it will obey your mouth. So how do I change that, Pastor? You got to get more word. You got to connect the dots. So some of y'all right now, I want you to go out of here saying, you know what? I went to church on a Wednesday night. And so I think I, I, I know I'm going to get some blessings out of this. Amen. Come on, somebody. I just sold my way into a powerful Thursday. I'm just saying I just sold my way up into a man. Shoot, I might get Hey, come on, somebody. I might I might mess around and get some money tomorrow. I just feel it coming. I just see. You can believe what you want. Amen. Now start speaking those things. Don't speak. I'm sick. Mm mm. Get you some word. By stripes, I'm healed. In the name of Jesus. And if you can't do something, start doing it a little bit at a time. Amen. And do it by faith. Amen. And you're going to see things change for you. Amen. Amen. I could preach all night, but I'm going to stop. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. So I know the times we're in now, the only way that we're going to get this uh, error out is we've got to bring truth. Amen. And so... Some of you and I know some of you watch me and sometimes you don't like me talking about uh, the, the, the public issues, you know, the things that we're dealing with. But God puts a mandate on me to do that. You guys remember when COVID was raging, I was the one saying all this stuff that nobody wanted to hear. Well, I have to keep on doing that because I have a responsibility to keep the body of Christ on track. And so I will, as long as they keep doing it, they keep saying uh, abortion is OK with God. You, you guarantee you're going to hear me say, no, it ain't. As long as they, they keep talking about gay and lesbian stuff is OK with the church. You always going to hear me say, no, it ain't. They keep talking about you don't have to tithe. You're going to always hear me say, yes, you do. Because I have the responsibility to say what God says. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father God, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for the word that went forth. I know that it's going to bring forth an abundant harvest because it's truth and truth can be changed. And we thank you for that. I'm praying right now for anyone who's watching us or maybe you're here and you don't know Jesus as Lord. All of this starts by you just coming to the end of yourself and just saying, here I am, Lord. I'm, I don't even know how I got to this point, but I just lay myself at your feet. Listen, he's not going to shun you. He's not going to make you feel shame. He's going to embrace you, pick you up, and give you a strength that you've never had before. But you've got to be willing to offer yourself. If that's you, just wave your hand, I'll see you. Maybe you're at home, God will see you there. Let's pray, let's pray this prayer. And let's all say it so that anyone who hears this message and even here, would know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Now, before I say it, the devil might try to complicate this, but it's just that simple. It's you coming to the place, recognizing a need, and then asking God to help you. And then your life will change from that point. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap for Jesus right there, amen.